What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mike Check Podcast. This is T Word, the People's Champ. Thanks for tapping in. Today, we're talking about Errol Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford, the mega fight set to happen on July 29, 2023, in Las Vegas. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We definitely appreciate the feedback. All right, y'all, let's get into it. So, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford set the tangle in just under two months, and this is going to be one of the biggest fights in a long time. It's the first time you're going to see two African-American fighters go head to head. So this brings up questions about how the fight is going to sell, stuff like that. But we're not talking about it today. We're actually going to talk about some technical aspects of the fight. Now, each fighter has their own specific strengths and weaknesses that will be brought to the ring. However, today we're going to explore how Errol Spence can overcome the angles of Terrence Crawford that could present problems. Now, one of the biggest things that you'll hear when there's debates and conversations that discuss this fight from a technical aspect is that Earl Spence's basic approach to boxing or fundamental approach to boxing will not be enough to handle the angles and athleticism of Terrence Crawford. So I want to take a moment to explain how the fight can go if he is able to offset the athleticism and angles. Now, the biggest thing that you have to be concerned with here is foot placement, footwork, and which stance Bud Crawford will set up to fight in. Everybody knows he's considered a switch hitter because he's effective from the orthodox standpoint, and he's actually really good from the southpaw standpoint. So when you think about those two stances, you're looking at two different types of fight. So if he goes into the orthodox stance, he and Errol Spence are going to find themselves in an open stance fight where their lead hands are closest to each other. What's going to also become important at that point is foot placement. If you're stepping inside or stepping outside, it's going to allow one guy to pivot and the other guy is going to be stuck or planted when he tries to make a move to his weak side. On the flip, when you're standing in two southpaws going toe to toe, now you're in a closed stance, meaning their lead feet are on opposite sides and their jabs are on opposite sides as well. So this creates a different aspect to where both guys can pivot out equally. Um, you'll see them turn a little bit more and kind of do a circular dance motion around each other. Whereas when their feet are lined up, one guy is going to have a better position than the other every single time. So for Terrence Crawford's benefit, when he's facing orthodox fighters, same for Errol Spence, they typically are in southpaw position and that's allowing them to be able to use their foot to get different shots off. And with Bud Crawford, this creates a lot of angles that his opponents can't handle because they just don't see enough southpaws in sparring and training and things like that. So they run into problems. Now, when you're a southpaw facing another southpaw, sometimes you tend to have issues because you can pivot, but you're not getting the same angle because they can move just as effectively as you from that position. So those advantages that Bud typically has actually will go away if he lines up in the southpaw stance against Errol Spence. So when that's not there, what happens next? Because you're also allowing an opportunity to let Spence close distance, step in closer, and actually initiate the body attack that he's known for. If you're looking for a prediction on how the fight goes, most people are under the understanding that if it's a short fight, it's likely that Bud Crawford knocked Errol Spence out. If it's a fight that goes the distance or deep into the fight, it probably favors Errol Spence because, because of his work rate and the fact that he's somebody that tends to get stronger later in fights and his punch output is going to impress the judges throughout the course of the fight. So if Bud isn't able to create the angles which allow him to counter punch effectively, get those sharp shots that you don't see, what does that mean for him later in the fight? In my opinion, it seems to lean to Earl Spence having a significant advantage, being able to use his jab to close distance, use it to pin Bud's guard, um, kind of pigeonhole him where the only thing he can do is pivot out of trouble instead of actually pivoting into an optimal punch position. So if you can kind of mentally picture this, if you were to close your eyes right now and picture them lined up in a southpaw versus southpaw close stance fight, and you picture both guys pivoting to their right, they're basically opening up to their right. There's no specific angle that's created. However, the fighter who's going to come forward instead of pivoting 
if he can be there first, he's going to be able to get the shots off before his opponent pivots. This typically favors Earl Spence in the general sense. Now, if Terrence Crawford, who I believe is really a southpaw, who's effective in the orthodox stance, if he'll fight orthodox, he might find an opportunity to align better shots, get better angles, use foot placement, and things like that to put Earl Spence in a compromising position. I just don't think that he's going to do that. I think that he believes the southpaw stance is his best way to go. And to me, that could be to his detriment. So if Earl Spence is to be able to take away the angle that Terrence Crawford can create on the, against other fighters, what happens next? We'll love to get you guys' thoughts. This has been T-Word for the Mike Check Podcast. Until next time, I'm out. Peace.